Tell them we ain't taking no days off. Days off, taking no days off. Boys think I'm long gone, way out. Days off, no days off. You can tell them we ain't taking no days off. Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Cornhole Journey. I'm Rob Ice Price, baby. Back with you for some more fresh content on the channel. Kind of a mixed bag of things to share with you today. Uh, I want to take you back to Arizona, where I was there for an ACL event in Mesa a few months ago. And I've kind of been sitting on this content for a while, but I want to let it out now. And uh, so we'll begin with, first off, I want to take you to the boards where I was walking by Anthony Ione, who's ACL commentator, also has a YouTube channel called Cornhole Science. And he was giving uh, his fellow play-by-play -play commentator, a guy they hired for the weekend, to come and help out with the, the, the broadcast to uh, understand better the game of cornhole. So really got some advanced thinking about how bags react to each other, what pros are thinking about when they look at the board texture. So check out this little impromptu kind of walk by video. Audio is not great, but kind of feel what he has to say and we'll talk about it. Enjoy. If, if it gets pushed out too far, so if I came in with a, here's another time you'd want to use a slick side. There's guys really good with a slick side. They'll throw it flat so it doesn't cut. And they'll come in like this. And then they'll ride it completely out of the way. Yeah. Now my opponent can't even go and catch that. So that is the high level stuff I think that a lot of people in the living rooms can't see. Right. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of complexities. Our roll guys will lay a level one block on purpose and they'll want to leave it there. So what they do is they come in with this pop a willy. So what they're doing is they're coming in like this. When it lands, that high friction material will slow the back down instantly. And then the front slams. So when the front slams, you get this like momentum. And they'll just roll over the bag and then leave that block. So it's kind of like they're creating this barricade and they want to leave it. And then they play this superior game over the top or around. Hundred percent, especially when it's a level one. A level one block, I'll just clean it up all day. When you move it down to a level two, this is typically where your superior air millers will go over the top, and it's really hard to push through that because you have to be right on. You have to be right on point. I'm just a you basically bit. have to land it on the logo. Yes. Right yeah. If I'm just a little bit left, this ends up happening. Then my bag goes out the top. Yeah. Now on a level one, if I'm a little bit left, it'll still grab this hole and you get this like hooking effect. So yeah, level one and level two. If you can end up in this position, Trey Ryder deemed it a, a, a V block, um, especially if this is a very high friction bag. So bags have speeds, anything from one to 10. So it's a, it's a B block if it's diamond, not square. Exactly. Okay. So this is just squared up and this is B. The advantage of that, and it really only works when you have a really high friction bag, something with a speed. So this right here is a speed five. Okay. And this is a speed nine. A speed five on my slow side is about the fastest I want to go. I would prefer something four or five. Three gets really sticky, especially if it's humid. Today, a three would be perfect because the boards are playing really fast. But. If I have a like a three speed on the bottom, that bag doesn't want to move very much. So by having a V block, when your opponent comes in, you know, it just it's just like, you know, like what was that game back in the day, the Artari game or whatever. If you hit the angle, you just kind of bang, you kind of bounce oh, yeah. off that way. Yeah. But when you come in like this on a real high friction bag, it essentially just kind of it, it deflects your opponent out. So when you're squared up, it doesn't deflect them as much. So that's a more advanced block. And you can't control its luck. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a subtlety. We have inside arm and outside arm. So if I'm throwing this way, my, my arm's over the board. We call that inside arm. If I happen to be on this side, now my arm is outside arm. So you have that extra distance from the outside of the board. So if I were to lay a block dead center and my opponent is inside arm, that kind of works really well. But if I lay a center block and I'm outside arm, I now can see that hole a little bit. So here's a subtlety. If my opponent is outside arm, I actually don't necessarily want to be a center block. I just want to be ever so slightly that side. Because now I have a clear lane. I can actually see the hole. 
and my opponent has an outside arm, I've actually clogged up that pond. And it's so much harder to cut around. So the more I move this bag this way, I'm losing the space to cut around. The more I move the bag this way, I'm opening that up to get through. So the half, half of the length on the bag is three inches. That is like, it's so small, but that makes a huge difference for the outside yeah. Pretty cool stuff, right? Anthony Ione knows the cornhole game so well. Check out his YouTube channel called Cornhole Science. It's a bit dormant now, but some really, really great content on there. He spends most of his time actually doing ACL commentary now in his cornhole life. But really nice guy, former ACL pro, knows the game well. And I really enjoyed uh, how he kind of broke down for that fellow there uh, what cornhole is all about, next level thinking, and what to expect when bags move on the boards. Next up, I want to take you also back to Arizona to Gilbert, a suburb outside Phoenix, where I bumped into this place called Hole Nine Yards. Rob Ice Price, baby, here with you. I'm in Mesa, Arizona, playing in the ACL Open here. And this weekend, I'm also stopping by a cool place in Gilbert, Arizona, Hole Nine Yards. It is unbelievable. It's a cornhole facility. It's not uh, a bar or some other place where they have cornhole also. It is a cornhole place. So. They've got food, they've got plenty of uh, beverages and uh, TV screens and 26, I think, courts. So, whole nine yards. Met the owner, I've actually played against the owner in the blind draw on Thursday night. I think his name is Nick Feinstein. And really cool guy, and he's a great uh, businessman and getting it going here. So, check it out. I love this place. They need to bring this to Dallas. Come on, guys, get one in Dallas. So, whole nine yards. Let's go check it out inside from footage from a couple nights ago. modern day version of the, the bowling alleys of the 80s where it was just a place to do one sport you bowl there you have it boom done so hats off to those guys out there at whole nine yards you're doing a great job keep it up so okay and finally i want to take you back to my boards now in my driveway you're going to watch a little ice versus ice action the bag brothers banditos versus bag brothers smileys these are my bags of choice i throw a lot of bag brothers and tcl in fact Rick Ellis, my partner, Fire, and myself, Ice, we're now, we'll let the world know, we're now sponsored players by Bag Brothers. So we're on the team. We're so excited to be part of their, of their process of growing their brand. And so for TCL, it's all about Bag Brothers. ACL boys, I still love you. I still got your black sheep baggers. You're, you're my guys, ACL. But for TCL, it's going to be the Bag Brothers. So I thought I'd play a game, let you show you how I practice. I found that you know, ghost holio, deca holio, just throwing air mails, just warming up, that's great, all fine. But it's tough to beat just playing a real game where every bag matters against yourself. So I set it up here with the camera, I got the score holio working, so let's find out who beat who when Bandito squared off against the Smiles.
Goal game. Only, only three to seven days. Tell them we ain't taking no days out.